Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. We know that the Bible says that our God is a God of order. And that is a personal promise, meaning that God, primarily through His Word and His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, He will bring order into each believer's life. Now, we need to submit. We need to have that desire to obey. And obey what? Well, we're going to see that in our study tonight. But God's order is not just for the individual, but it's for the family, it's for the community, and it is for the nation. And realize that God's nation will become an eternal empire, a kingdom where His truth will reign. And it needs to begin to reign first in your life and my life. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Exodus and chapter 18. The book of Exodus and chapter 18. We began this chapter last week. We saw that there was a reunion between Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, and his his family. I'm speaking about his family with Yitro, his father-in-law, Zipporah, his wife, and his two sons. And we'll find today that Yitro, in fact, as I mentioned last week, the portion of Scripture, and we know that there are Torah portions that are read throughout the year, on Shabbat, on Mondays and Thursdays and holidays. And this Torah portion, which we began last week, is entitled Yitro or Jethro. We're going to see that he has uh, several names, this Yitro. He is called a Kohen, but that word simply can be a, a servant. And he was someone who was known as a servant. And what does that mean? Someone who wants to make things better. One who is willing to help, to assist in order to comfort, help, benefit someone else. That's his nature, and we're going to see that demonstrated early on in the portion of Scripture that we're going to be looking at this evening. So look with me, as I said, to chapter 18, where we left off last week in verse 13. After this reunion, it says in verse 13, and it came about on the next day, that Moses was sitting to judge the people. Now, that is an important concept, this judging. And the purpose, as we'll clearly see, the purpose is to bring godly order. In order when there's disputes and conflicts and in society, there's constantly, as in those days, so too today. Historically, presently, and in the future, there will be conflicts until that new Jerusalem, that kingdom in its eternal state is established. Only then will there be perfect unity. But here we see that God, through his judgment, brings unity. He brings togetherness in order that his will can be maintained. So look again, verse 13 And it came about on the next day that Moses, he sat to judge the people. And the people stood before Moses from the morning until the evening. Now, remember that. Min haboker ad ha'er, from the morning until the evening. 
This phrase is going to be repeated in a few more verses. And it speaks of two things. It speaks about how many conflicts, how many issues, matters that, that were within the children of Israel that needed to be settled, meaning needed judgment. And one of the foundational truths that we can say from this passage is this. We need judgment. And here, judgment, it has to do with setting things in order according to the truth, the revelation, the, the laws of God. So judgment is a good thing. We're studying on our weekly television show, the book of Matthew. We're doing that both in Hebrew and in the other languages that our show is translated into. And we find here in Matthew chapter 7, it says, do not judge. But this word has, in that context, a sense of condemnation. This is not what Moses is doing when he sits to lishpot et ha'am to judge the people. It is not about condemnation. So when it says, do not judge, that you, lest you be judged, Obviously, it's that idea of don't condemn someone else because you'll be condemned. And the same measure that you use, that is that perspective, that standard that you condemn someone else, it will be used back at you. This is not the purpose of judgment. This is evaluating a situation in order that God's standard might be maintained so there's order, not condemnation it is not for the purpose of punishment necessarily but putting things in a right order and this is a requirement a necessity if a community is going to be established that that manifests god's glory so we read and moses set to judge the people and the people stood before Moses from the morning until the evening. And then we see, look at verse 14, and the father-in-law of Moses. Now, it could simply be the word Yitro, but it's specifically by honoring this man, it says the father-in-law of Moses. Moses is seen as a respected servant of God, I've mentioned oftentimes how the Bible emphasizes his humility, that he is God's chosen one to lead the congregation. And therefore, when the scripture speaks about the father-in-law of Moses, it's a way of, of lifting this man up. That if Moses, if he married into this family, if he took the wife or the daughter of Yitro for a wife, this says something about this family and therefore this man, Yitro. So the father-in-law of Moses, he saw all what he, and the he here is Moses, what Moses was doing for the people. Now all of this, it reveals to us that this judgment was for the people to bring unity to bring order, to bring a situation that manifests God among the people. Second part of verse 14, and he said, what is this thing which you are doing for the people? Why do you sit by yourself and all the people stand before you? Once more, men ha boker ad ha erv from the morning until the evening. Now, what we are to conclude here is that Moses, his primary position, now in this time in the wilderness, they have formed a community. They are a nation on the move with an objective, with a purpose. Now, we know elsewhere from the scripture that God is preparing them. He is leading them. He is bringing them, as we have seen through many different circumstances, situations, 
They have problems, obstacles, and such. And what God is doing is that he is growing up his people, maturing them. He is preparing them to enter into the land. Now, in one sense, there's that, that nation or that generation that came out of Egypt. They are not walking in faith. And for the most part, that nation or that generation is going to die out. Now, these 40 years in the wilderness, this is to prepare the next generation. And here again, we won't go into it now, but this concept of the next generation is so important biblically for understanding a kingdom perspective and being ready for that kingdom establishment. So he says, why do you sit and by yourself and all the people stand before you from the morning until the evening? He sees this spectacle and he's bothered by it. He's confused by it. And Moses, verse 15, and Moses said to his father-in-law, for the people come unto me, Lidrosh Elohim. Lidrosh is a word of seeking, but it's a strong word. It shows an intensity that the people, they wanted to know God's judgment, his mindset, his perspective in a given situation. Now, this, this statement, Lidrosh Elohim, well, we know that a synagogue, for example, is called Bet Knesset, a house of gathering. It can also be called Bet Filah, a house of prayer. But normally, we talk about another name, Bet Midrash. Now, this is usually seen as a, a house of study, a place of learning. And the word midrash, it's the same word that appears here, a different form. This is the infinitive. It states to do something, the infinitive. Midrash is speaking about what is done. So what is done is seeking the Lord. This place and what they're doing is in order that they could request in a very strong way God's will knowing that it's only his purpose his truth that is going to bring a good and proper reconciliation to an issue that it would be settled properly so he says Lidrosh Elohim Elohim because this word for God speaks about a judging God a God who is the, the rule, the authority. Verse 16. For if there's a matter to them, meaning to the people, the people come unto me, and I will judge between man and between his neighbor. That is the one that he has a dispute with. And what does he do? He doesn't take sides. This is what the scripture says. And the end of verse, verse 16 is very important. Notice what Moses says. Vehodati, I will make known. There's the key. He is imparting knowledge. I will, will make known Chukei Ha Elohim, the statutes of of God or the laws of God and Torah Taf. Now this is important because we know that there's only one Torah, one law of God, 613 commandments, but one Torah. This is the word Torah in the plural. And when we see it here, and I think many Bibles in English might translate it as teachings, but it's probably better understood as instructions. I will make known his laws, his statutes, and 
He's going to make known the instructions, his instructions. And that's what we should realize. If there's going to be order in my life, if there's going to be order in my family, in my community, in my nation, it is a requirement, a prerequisite, that the laws of God are, are known and his instructions are followed. It's only through the instruction of God in knowing his laws, then and only then, is there going to be order in my life. Now, again, I'm going to be teaching in the Hebrew study later on in the book of Matthew where it speaks about it has a phrase where it says, to do to others what you would have them do to you, this is the law and the prophets. Now, this would cause many to believe, well, there's the, pro the solution. I uh, don't need to study the law and prophets. I, I know what their intent is, and that is to do to others as I would have them do to me. Well, that is an impossibility without knowing the commandments of God, the revelation of the prophets. They assist us in knowing how and what is our responsibility to others. This is a summary statement. Meaning, in the same way it is natural for a person to, to want their best. But sometimes we don't know what our best is. We want the best. We want the things that, that will make us joyful, make us pleasing to God. But oftentimes, we are utterly confused about what they are. So it's a summary statement. It is not a replacement well, I'll talk more about that when we get there in the book of Matthew. But, but notice, in order to have the will of God, his glory manifested, things being administered properly, we need the laws of God and we need his instructions. Verse 17. Choten Moshe, the father-in-law of Moses, said to him, it is not good, the thing which you are doing. Now, Yitro, he's observing. And he uh, came to a, a submissiveness before the God of Israel. Last week we saw that. And him making offerings and such before the Lord God of Israel. And, and God is using him in order to give counsel to Moses, who was up on Mount Sinai previously, where he saw that burning bush called, in that context, Mount Horeb. And we see that Moses could think, well, who are you? God didn't choose you. God didn't speak to you face to face. God didn't, didn't have you lead the people out. And who are you to tell me? But remember, Moses is humble. And he realizes that God's wisdom and his counsel, it can come from a variety of sources. Sometimes, and I can remember uh, teaching, and it was a mixed group, meaning there were people of all ages there. And I remember this, this little boy. I asked the questions not thinking at all that the small children would give an answer. And I asked this question. And sometimes when, when I teach, and especially in a, a study uh, setting, not so much as a lecture, but I'll ask a question because, you know what, I want to learn and I'm hoping to hear revelation from those who have gathered. God may speak to them much clearer than he speaks to me. And they become my teacher. And, and I remember this little boy, probably five, six years old. He gave just a great answer to that question. And none of us would have derived that on our own. And therefore, God used this young man to, to instruct a uh, 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 much mature group and this is what we see here God's using 
a Gentile, a Midianite, in order to bless the children of Israel, to give them insight, rather common sense, but insight in order that things might, might bring about a fulfillment. And we'll see why I say we'll bring about a fulfillment in a moment. So he says, in the verse 17, the thing that you are doing is not good. Verse 18, Navotibol. This is a word for two words, speaking of utterly wearing out. And he says, you and also the people, this people, will wear out. And it's being with you. In the same way that you, from morning until evening, people are what? They're standing before you. And they're waiting all throughout the day in order to get their turn before you. And he says, this, this is not going to end well. It will end in a poor manner. He says, for heavy from you is this thing. It's too heavy for you to do this. You are not able to do it alone. Verse 19. Now, and this is the Hebrew word in the Tanakh for now. Usually we think in modern Hebrew the word akshav. This is the word ata with an ein, not with an aleph. He says here, verse 19. Now listen to my voice and I will counsel you. And if it should come about that God is with you, meaning if God agrees to this, then you shall be for the people, meaning you shall be before the people and, and before God. And you will bring these things to God. Verse 20. And you will caution or warn them. And he says, the statutes and the, the instructions or the teachings you are to make known to them. Why? So he's saying, here's the, the order. You need to stand before God and, and the people before you. But he's going to show one in a moment a very important difference. And he says, you know, what you've said, that the purpose of what you're doing, I don't want to change that. He agrees, he affirms that people need to know the statutes, the law of God, and his instructions. But there's a better way to make this known. And it's about empowering others, giving them responsibility. And also recognizing how God is raising up others in order that they can do some of the things that the leadership is doing. So Yitro, he says here, look at verse 20. He says, and you warn them, caution them in regard to the statutes and the instructions. You make known to them the way that they should go. Now, what's important is this, and it says the way that they shall walk in it. In it is the word way. The word way in Hebrew is derech, and it's feminine, so it's vayichu ba, the way that they should walk in it. Now, two things are going to be said. We see that it's only through, and this is so simple, but we ignore it. We, we overlook it, and that's this. I will not know the way to travel, the way to go, if it's not based upon making known to me first the laws of God and his instructions. I will not be in the right way. And if I'm not in the right way, notice what he says further on. Not only that you will know the way to walk in it. He says, Viet asher yasun. And the thing to do, he says, also, 
the deed which they will do. So he reveals something. In order for me to do the right thing, I need to be in the right location first. And it's only when I take hold of the instructions of God, having the knowledge, the, the understanding of the laws or the statutes of God, only then am I in a situation where I can be where I need to be and do what I need to do in order to maintain the order that's in my life or reestablish that order for me or for my household, my community, or even beyond that. Verse 21. Yetro is still speaking and he says, And you, Techaze. Techaze, usually, this is a word that we, we, we get vision from, chazon. This is in the verbal form. So you need to have a vision. Most Bibles, and I would disagree with this, but, but many talk about discernment. He says, Moses, you need to function, behave with discernment, with the vision of the Lord. So vision, having a godly vision from God gives us discernment. He says, you with discernment from all the people, and the implication is, Choose out, appoint, appoint who? Anshe Chayil, people of valor. Now, this is a word, normally, when we talk about Chayil, we're talking about valor or a, a concept of virtue. It says in the scripture, who can find a virtuous wife? Same word, eshet chayil, speaks about those who want victory. There is a connection between, because this same word, if you just look at it, the vowel pointings are different, but same consonants, same root. It's also a word for an army. It's a word that, that manifests power. So it's only when I'm behaving in a virtuous way. When I'm behaving according to value, only then is God going to supply me the power in order that I can accomplish. It's a word of authority and power for the purpose of results, godly results. And that is maintaining or establishing the order of the Lord. So what are some of the characteristics in order to be a man or a woman of value or virtue. Well, first it talks about those that have the fear of God, meaning this, that they want to behave demonstrating God's priority. It's not my priorities, not what I want, but it's God's will, his priorities. That's where we learn that there's a connection between the fear of the Lord and the will of God being established. It says, if you are fearing God, you are also anshe emet. Anshe emet, people of the truth. So significant how many times the word emet, truth, appears and in the contexts where that word appears, truth. All of this relates to the knowledge of God, the statutes of God, the instructions, the laws of God, the commandments of God, truth. So we have to be people of virtue, and foundationally that virtue is, is manifested because the fear of the Lord, because we apply the truth of the Lord to our life, that's found in the word of God. And notice that next phrase, son e vatsa. Now, vatsa, is oftentimes it's beitza, and it's different vowel pointings, but what is beitza? It is a prophet. It speaks about wealth. Some Bibles simply translate it as money, but it's not a normal word for money, but it speaks about excessive, that they can be moved or manipulated because of their desire to have 
wealth. And what he's saying here, and this is so important, it is highly problematic that those who are going to be judging, those who are going to be in leadership, that they are people who like money. No, what's a qualification? Well, look at this word. It's a word for hating. That's literally what it says. Haters of profit, haters of wealth. See, if they're motivated by that, then their judgment can be influenced. They are candidates for what? Candidates for a bribe. So if they're going to have authority, they cannot be individuals that, that seek, that seek wealth so haters a prophet and he says you shall put them over put these individuals these on chayil these people of value you shall put them over them meaning the people and you do so making them ministers of of a thousand of a hundred ministers of 50 and ministers of of tens meaning maybe dozens So we have what? With discernment. We see some, they can be given a little authority over uh, uh, tens of people. Others, 50. Others, 100. Others, thousands. So it's a hierarchy all under the authority of Moses, who he himself is under the authority of God. And notice how this works in greater detail. Verse 22. And they shall judge the people at, at all the time. See, Moses can't do it day in and day out from the morning until the evening. So it says, they will do it at all times. And if it should come about a big thing, a large matter, something of, of great issue. So if a big deal comes up, they will bring it unto you. But everything that's small, they will judge. And they will lighten, meaning what's placed upon you, they will lighten it from you. And they will lift up, it says, with you. Now, this phrase at the end of verse 22, ve nas u itach, here, It says, they will lift up with you. And the implication here is that they are going to be participating in lifting up the people. That's what va'nis u itach means. Some Bibles get it wrong. That they're lifting Moses up. No, they're lifting up with Moses the the standards the spirituality the order of the people that it draws closer to the will of god verse 23. now yitro not a prideful man he is not one that assumes he comes before his son-in-law in a most humble manner and respectful look at verse verse 23 if this thing you will do. And then he goes, Elohim, and God commanded you. So he's saying, bring this before the Lord. And if this thing you will do, bring it before the Lord to see if he commands, and the implication is, if he commands it, he approves it. If this is according to God's order, his will, if he agrees to it, he says, then, he says, you are able to stand and also the people upon its place. So it says, you'll be able to continue to stand and the people will be able to be in their place, meaning there'll be order. And notice the end of verse 23. Yavo shalom, And he, meaning the people, the people will do what? They will come to shalom. This is a great example of the word shalom referring to the will of God. 
Shalom also is a term of destination, that you'll get where you're supposed to be, and that you'll also, you'll also be individuals that not only get to where you're supposed to be, but you're going to be fulfilling what God would have you to do. And now verse 24, we read here, And Moses heard the voice of his father-in-law. Now, heard has an implication here that he took heed. He obeyed what Yitro told him. And he did all which he said. Verse 25. And Moses chose on Shechayil men of valor from all of Israel. And this also teaches us an important principle. And that is men of valor. People who have the fear of the Lord, who are, are candidates to be used by God among our midst. They may come from a wide variety of places, from different families, so it's significant. Moses looked for them, sought them out from all of Israel, meaning all of the tribes, each of the family. He imparted what Yitro had told him throughout the congregation of Israel. Look again at verse, verse 25. And Moses chose men of valor from all of Israel, and he set them as heads or leaders over the people. In the same way that Yitro said, leaders of a thousand, leaders of a hundred, leaders of fifty, and leaders of tens or Dozens of people. And what did they do? Verse 26. And they judged the people. Bekol et. At all time. Every moment. This allowed the people to wait less time. That there was a availability when there was a problem to get the revelation. Now this also, according to the sages, had a benefit. Because oftentimes, because they had to wait for such a long time from in the morning till the evening for their turn to come up so Moses could hear and give a ruling based upon the instructions and the laws of God, it could very well be that individuals would get tired of waiting and they would take matters into their own hands and they would act without this revelation and it would damage the community, damage the nation. But now when it says, at, at every moment, they would judge the people. It meant that people could come, get a response, and not waste as much time. That there was, and the principle here that some sages derived is swift justice. That's what people want, and that's what now they were being given Verse 26, and they judged the people at every moment. But a difficult thing they would bring to Moses. And everything that was small, every matter that was small, they would judge. So we have a, a distribution, a delegation of authority based upon the issue at hand. If it was necessary, Moses would do it. If it was a simpler issue, those who had grown and learned and matured, they could step in and bring that same perspective, that same judgment that Moses would give, they were able to, to also provide it. So things moved more efficiently. And remember, this was also Go back up to the end of verse 23, where it says, Yavo Veshalom, that the people, that they would go in peace. Meaning three things, we talked about two of them. One was that they would move forward. They would arrive at their destination. Secondly, they would arrive there in a proper state. And the third thing that we need to see is this, 
that this would bring about the revelation, the will of God, the glory of God within the congregation, that they would have that shalom. And shalom is a important word that, that reveals the, the emphasis of God and from God for a situation, what is right, what is wrong, what is important and what is least important. Verse 27, our last verse. In my opinion, verse 27 raises more questions than they ask. And sometimes a, a good student of the Bible, they will be led to see here are important issues and perhaps look for those answers in a different location when similar things are taught and discussed. Let's just read verse 27 and then we'll, we'll summarize. Ve'yishlach Moshe et chotno, which means Moses sent his father-in-law. Now, where did he send him? Well, it tells us at the end. Ve'yilech lo el artso, and he went to his own land. Now, the questions that it raises is this. Why didn't Yitro stay with the children of Israel? Why did Moses, seems as though he took the initiative and sent Yitro back to his own land. Now, one explanation, I don't want to go too deep into this because it's not emphatically said, but the primary response from the sages is that Yitro, he had shown a, a commitment in the first half of this chapter when he worshipped the God of Israel. He has shown that he has a sensitivity for administering things, knowing the will of God. And perhaps now Moses is sending him back to Midian in order to influence the people there. Some would say that the fact that it says, Vayishlach, he sent a apostle is called a shaliach. So some would say that this is perhaps the first shaliach, the first apostle from an Old Testament, the perspective of the Tanakh in, in history. And the first shaliach, it's Yitro. So Moses sent him and he, notice Yitro, he went. It manifests submissiveness. That Yitro, even though he was older, even though that he was the father-in-law of Moses and therefore would have a, a, a place of greater respect within the family, Yitro submitted to Moses. Why? Well, even though Moses always spoke of him as the Torah did, as his father-in-law, a term of respect, it also shows us in the Torah that the man of God, the one that God chose to lead his congregation, has the ability, the call, the authority to, to give assignments. And that's what Moses did. He sent Yitro back to his land, and Yitro being a humble, a submissive individual, he went and did what Moses said. When we look at this, we see in many different descriptions things showing submissiveness, obedience. So when we look at this passage, we see there's a call for us to hear, listen, and learn, knowing that we'll never have the order of God unless we have revelation of God. But just having that revelation is not enough. We need to be willing to submit to it. And this is a requirement if we're going to remember that important phrase at the end of verse 23, shalom. if we're going to arrive at the proper destination in the proper way, revealing the proper glory of God. Well, I'll close with that until next week. May God richly bless you. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website 
loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.